Okay, so that's taken care of. Now we're going to talk about how we're going to divide the, uh, the atrium with a septum. And we're going to see that this uh, atrial septum is actually developed from two septa. One is called septum primum, primum means first, and the other is called septum secundum, second, meaning one develops first, the other develops second. Before we start to see how that happens, let's give a little bit of thought to what it is we want to accomplish. In other words, let's think about functionally what we need the septum to do in the embryo and in the fetus, and then what it needs to do in the postnatal uh, individual so that when we build it, we can make sure that it functions in the way that we want it to function. And when we think about this functionally, what we'll realize is that there are two critical functions that have to be served by this atrial septum as we're building it and after we're finished building it as it exists in the fetus and in the newborn. The first requirement is that there has to always be a communication that exists throughout the development of the septum and throughout all of prenatal life. There has to be a communication between the right atrium and the left atrium. There has to be a way for blood to get from the right side to the left side throughout all of prenatal life. The reason that's important is that in prenatal life, the source of oxygenated blood for this embryo and fetus is the placenta, not the lungs. And since the placental venous return is coming to the embryo by way of the umbilical vein, and since the umbilical vein ends up draining into the inferior vena cava, which drains into the right atrium, that means oxygenated blood is coming into the right side of the heart, into the right atrium. But we know that the aorta, which is going to be supplying the embryo and fetus, the aorta is coming out of the left side of the heart. So therefore, we have to find a way to get the blood shunted from the right side where the oxygenated blood is coming into the heart to the left side where the oxygenated blood is leaving the heart. And in order to accomplish this, we must have a communication that allows the shunting of blood from right to left. And that communication has to be there in always throughout prenatal life. So that's the first requirement. The second requirement is that we want to build this in such a way, build the septum in such a way, so that as soon as the baby is born, immediately upon birth, we can completely separate the atria. So even though we had a communication throughout all of prenatal life, we have to completely separate the atria as soon as the baby is born. And we have, because now we're going to be getting our oxygenated blood from the lungs, which is on the left side, coming into the left side of the heart. And we have to be able to, make this separation using the material that's already there, using the structures that are already there. We can't build a new septum after the baby is born. We have to use the septum that's already there. So those are the two requirements, that functional requirements that the septum has to serve. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. Let's start with septum primum, the first septum. Now septum primum is going to grow down from the upper wall of the atrial septum and it's going to grow down into the atrium, like that, getting longer and longer as it goes. Now, if we just stop it at this point, what we can say is that we have an, a septum, septum primum, that is, let's label it septum primum, we have a septum primum that at this point is partially separating the two atria, but certainly not completely. And we have this region of communication and that region of communication is called the foramen primum, first hole, first opening. So what we can say, firstly, notice that the foramen primum is not a hole in septum primum. The foramen primum is not a hole in septum primum. Rather, the foramen primum is a region of the atrium into which the septum primum has not yet grown. Or to say it a different way, the foramen primum is this region or the space between the septum primum and the endocardial cushion. What that means is that by definition, as septum primum continues to get longer and longer and longer, foramen primum is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So let's let foramen primum get longer. Uh, I'm sorry, septum primum get longer. Foramen primum is getting smaller. And what's going to happen eventually is that foramen uh, septum primum septum primum is going to come down and it will fuse with the endocardial cushion. 
when septum primum fuses with the endocardial cushion, by definition, that will mean we've had closure of foramen primum. But if that happens at this stage, we will have completely separated the right atrium from the left atrium, and that would mean the embryo would die because, remember, we needed to be able to shunt blood from right to left at all times, prenatally. So what we're going to do is the following. Before septum primum completes its growth downward toward the endocardial cushion, before this foramen primum closes, an opening will form in septum primum as a result of programmed cell death called apoptosis, and there will develop a perforation in the septum in this region like that. So we perforate the septum primum and that perforation will be given the name foramen secundum, the second opening. So while I made the point a few moments ago that foramen primum is not a hole in septum primum, now we can point out that foramen secundum is a hole in septum primum. It's a hole in septum primum. And it's very important to recognize that foramen secundum opens before foramen primum closes. And that way, we will have a continuous path passageway for blood to get from the right side to the left side. 